everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Jessica, um, and I want to start off a little bit unconventional, a little bit fun. So here's a story all about how my life got twisted upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell all you guys how I came to present here. Okay. So um, <laughs> um, the name of the name of my presentation is um, the power of justice through service, and I'm going to talk about how my love for people has transformed my calling. Um, and so I am going to talk firstly about how the, how my love for social justice and service has connected me closer to God, how PR has made me a better advocate, and how my journey through being here at Biola has been transformed. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Okay, so the beginning of my story starts when I was at Cal State Dominguez Hills. A lot of you don't know, but I'm a transfer here at Biola University. Um, I used to go to a school called Cal State Dominguez Hills, and I was a communications major. And while I was there, I was a dancer, um, and I performed for all the basketball games for um, two whole seasons. So that was really interesting. It grew my love for basketball, and I grew up being a dancer, and so that was really cool. I was on my campus radio show, which is the picture in the middle, with my best friend. Um, and then I also was um, the executive, not executive, who I was an assistant for Toro Productions, which was the um, advertising like club on campus. And so I just had a, my goal was I wanted to be a entertainment journalist. That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to work red carpets. I wanted to interview celebrities. That was where I saw myself. If you would have asked me when I was 18, Jessica, what is your story? That was what I would have told you. I was like, I want to work for E! News. That's where um, I want to go. Um, and then through that experience, though, I decided that there was something missing, though, on my journey at Dominguez. I was like, there's something that's not here that I need. And so I started seeing how I had a really big desire to follow Christ. Um, and like a big step was that was getting admitted to Biola. So in fall of 2014, I got accepted on an academic scholarship to Biola University. Um, and I declared as a PR major, and instantly I threw myself into wanting to be involved. My second semester at Biola University, I applied to be a resident advisor, where I plunged myself into the whole community. And little did I know that that was going to be what started. I didn't know it at the time, but that was what was going to start my passion for service. Um, and so I was an RA um, in Alpha for a year, um, and that's the far, those are the pictures with me and my staff. Um, I volunteered for many things, Soul of Soul, um, all types of uh, multicultural events, did Tory conferences. Um, and then part of being at Biola that changed my life forever was Missions Conference. Um, and being that Biola was my first private school, it was my first Christian school. I had never gone to anything that was like this before. And so I was like, what is missions conference? And so I go with no expectation. Um, and so it was, the theme was greater. And so I was like, OK, like, let's do this. And so I go and I go to a conference by, um, with someone named Jim Guff, who was um, a part of the Pepperdine Global um, Leadership and Advocacy Program. Um, and he talked about how him and his group of lawyers went to Uganda to serve and advocate for the children there who were like falsely accused of crimes. Um, and he also talked about his time spent on the Uganda board. Um, and as he's talking and as he's telling his story um, about this moment, I start getting so moved. 
I'm like crying. I'm in, I'm in the back of Crowell just like getting so touched by this experience. And I was trying to figure out like, what is going on with me? There's something going on with me here that um, is happening. And so I just, I just wanted to know what this me meant. And so I went all around campus and I, um, <laughs> um, I went all around campus and I was like trying to figure out where this passion was deriving from. And so I, I went to my, sorry. <laughs> okay, regroup. Um, I went all around campus and I was trying to figure out like what is this passion derived from? And so I went to my RD and I asked her, I said, you know, there's something going on here and I think that I need to connect to what is going on. And so she was like, okay. And so she prayed over me and then I called my mom um, and I was like, mom, you know, I really think that the Lord is calling me to do law or social justice. And she starts laughing and I was like, why are you laughing? And then she was like, well, you know, like that has been something that has been prayed over you since you were little. And I just hoped, my hope for you was that God would lead you in that direction. And I was like, well, that would have been good to know. Um, and so with that being said, oops, sorry. And so with that being said, I plunged myself in my journey to dedicate myself to service and advocacy. And, um, and then I went to Dr. Kim and I said, Dr. Kim, I no longer have a desire to do entertainment journalism. I really want to do law. I really want to be an advocate. I really want to work in social justice. Help me out. And so she was like, okay. She's like, well, you need an internship. I was like, okay, can I do something political? And she's like, we'll try to find you something. So um, I ended up being in Washington, D.C. Um, for two months this summer, um, where I worked with TFAS, which is all these acronyms. And TFAS stands for the Fund for American Studies. And what that is, is it provides a political opportunity um, for people to go to DC, go to briefings, and experience what it's like in the political realm. Um, while in TFAS, they have different institutes. I was in the Institute of Philanthropy and Volunteer Services, which means I was going to DC in, with the intent to serve others. And so it was at DC where I really started seeing how my a love for service that I didn't know I had. I, like I had said in, before, I had connected already. I hadn't connected with my want to serve as an RA. I knew that I was doing it, but my heart wasn't connected to it. So it wasn't until I was here where I connected to it. And while I was here, as you can see, I you know, I was in Congress, I went to the Capitol, I volunteered at, um, I, uh, at old p folks' homes. Um, I worked under a nonprofit um, named NIFTI, which stands for the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, um, which is an organization that provides entrepreneurial training for inner city kids. And so I was working with youth and I was doing business camps with them, teaching them tools that they would not necessarily have in order to be successful in their careers. And so it was really just so profound being able to be a part of that experience. Um, and also while being there, um, I got to visit the Peace Corps, which was an amazing, amazing opportunity that showed me what it looks like to serve overseas and to um, serve people over nations in two years, whether it's in agriculture or in education. Um, and also while I was there, I um, served at a organization called um, Bright Beginnings, which was a daycare facility for homeless children, which is the picture, which is this picture right here, where I got to play with kids for three hours and watch over them and take care of them and it just filled my heart with so much joy that I was able to serve these kids in this way. And so, and there was things that I learned about nonprofits while being in DC. I learned a lot about how the efforts of the nonprofits 
really affect the community. These people, a lot of the people in D.C. are homeless. A lot of the people in D.C. are um, under the normal line to make um, to make money. And so I was seeing how these people were um, getting affected by these things, but utilizing these as resources um, to become better. Um, and so I think that being at in D.C. for those two months really, really showed me that the best way to advocate for people is to serve them. And I started seeing that very well, like, it doesn't just always look like being in a suit and standing, you know, in a courtroom. And But th sometimes the best way to fight and advocate for people is to serve them well. And so I was trying to see how what I have been learning here in PR helped me with my calling and my desire to be a PR professional or to be a lawyer. Um, and so I started seeing that PR helped me realize um, and it revealed the importance of having connections, maintaining ethics throughout all sectors as a way to emphasize integrity and honesty, learning how to send a message through writing, visuals, and speech, and understand who or what you're fighting for. And so these are ways that I saw my major help me connect with what it meant to be a leader. Um, and then I started seeing how was it connecting to who I was as a Christian. Um, and I started seeing how service is all throughout the Bible. And if you look at Jesus Christ's life, you see that he was a man that served others, whether it was through his miracles or whether it was through him praying or whether it was for his desire and passion to for the good of his people, Jesus was a man who served. And so there was um, many mentions of this in the Bible, Matthew 20, 27. Um, and then one of the things that I loved, that I learned about Jesus Christ in his service was that the most humble form of what Jesus could have taken up was that of a servant. This is a man of God who is a like God in every way, who came down as a servant to serve people. Um, and then in Luke 6, 3, it talks about give and it shall be given unto you. This sense of that because of your heart to desire to serve people well, you will be given good things. Matthew 25, 35 through 40, which is one of my favorite verses, talks about how when you did those things to your brothers and sisters, when you were feeding them, when you were clothing them, when you were helping them in these ways, you were doing that to me. So go forth and do those things. And so, like I said before, I started seeing how part of loving people well is serving them. And then the greatest commandment is to love one another. Um, and his greatest service, God's greatest service for us, was the redemption and salvation of man. Um, and so I started seeing that I really do have such a heart for justice, and that is what I want to do with my life. Um, and so I got the opportunity to write a 15-page biblical thesis on the Jesus of, uh, of on the justice of God. And um, I learned that the justice of God um, is part of his who he is, and God acts rightly according to his moral law. Um, and justice is not always just about being the loudest or being the most or getting the most people behind you, but it's about the dedication to give a voice to the people who don't have one. Um, and so these were examples in the Bible that I saw justice being served. Um, and one of the things that I love about justice, if you know me, I'm an actor. Um, and I mean that by like, I like to do things. And so one of the things about justice is you have to act within justice to be powerful. And you have to do things in order for justice to be done. And so this is how it relates to my future. Um, I really hope that I can do uh, the Peace Corps, which will allow me to go overseas and serve people well. But I realize and understand that justice is service can not only be globally, and it, it doesn't always have to be even nationally, but service can be within 
a community and within people to people. Um, I really want to get involved in some sort of social work. Um, I plan on going law to law school to become a civil rights attorney um, to, again, advocate and fight on behalf of people and to serve them well and to and in my fight to serve them well, um, to just love them more and connect more to God. And so thank you.